Hi everyone, hope you're doing well and feeling good. For this practice today, I do have my blocks and I have a belt. If you don't have any blocks, feel free to roll up a towel or a blanket. And I also have a pillow. So you can use a pillow in lieu of blocks and we will be doing some poses on our knees. So feel free to grab a pillow to make sure that the knees are more comfortable. Let's get started in our opening pose of our Shavasana. So go ahead and carefully lay back, find your most comfortable position. If you do have any concerns with the lower back, feel free to bend those knees, separate the feet as wide as the mat, rest the knees against each other if the lower back feels good. You can extend those legs long, separate those feet. It's a little bit wider than the hips and allow the feet to flop open. And let's draw the arms down by the sides, palms facing up. And just take a moment here to notice anything there is to notice about your body. Check in, see how your body is doing today. See how the different parts of the body are doing and making note of any part that needs, that might need modification or even skipping. So always feel free to modify or skip Anything that doesn't feel good, take as many breaks as you like. And then let's start to find our ujjayi breath. If you haven't found it already, breathing in and out through the nose, if that's open and comfortable, feeling the breath in and out of the lower belly region, that expansion of the belly as you inhale, and that soft release as you exhale. And then let's add that soothing sound to our breath, both on the inhales and the exhales, as if you're fogging a mirror in front of you. Just take a few more deep rounds of ujjayi breath here. Feel how relaxed your body can be. And try to bring that essence of relaxation into each of our poses, even though they can be physically challenging. We still want to maintain a relaxed mind. Start to bend those knees, slide the feet onto the mat if they're not already there. And then let's start that gentle sway of the knees, right and left. Maybe you're turning the head in the opposite direction as the knees. So the feet can be together or the feet can be as wide as the mat, whatever feels good. Finding just that gentle sway. And then let's draw those knees in the face to point back up to the ceiling. Let's start to hug those knees into the chest. Give them a squeeze. If it feels good to lift the hips off of the mat, only if that's comfortable on the tailbone, you can. You can do that a few times. Maybe even peeling the head off of the mat, forehead directs up to the knees. So find something that feels good. And then let's release head and shoulders down onto the mat. Extend those legs up to the ceiling. Start to point and flex the feet a few times. Wiggle those toes. And then let's circle those feet a few times in each direction. It's getting a nice, nice, some nice movement for the ankles. A nice stretch there. Change the direction of your foot circle. Inhale, press the heels up. Maybe add the arms up to the ceiling and then exhale, hug it in. Maybe forehead to the knees. Inhale, limbs extend up, engage to the core neutral position of the spine, and then exhale, hug it in. So it's up to you whether you want to lift the head off of the mat or keep it down. Inhale, maybe start to separate the limbs a little bit more, engaging really strongly through the core neutral position in the spine. Exhale, to hug it in. And then one more time, inhale, stretch those limbs, and then exhale, hug it in. And then let's release those hips down, one hand lightly on each knee so you can start to slowly circle those knees in opposite direction. Change the direction of your knee circles. And then let's place the feet down onto the mat. And let's slowly roll onto our right side and we're going to prop ourselves up onto our forearm and elbow. So we'll have the forearm parallel to the top edge of the mat, elbow is underneath the shoulder, palm spreads wide, and then your top hand can be in front of you for a little support. I'm gonna do some side 
waste work. So we'll take an inhale and then as you exhale, squeeze that bottom right sideways, almost like you're coming into a little side bend. Keep drawing the shoulders away from the ears and then let's slowly release. So take an inhale and then exhale, squeeze. Feel the work of the side waist and then inhale to release. If you want a little bit more, you can lift the hips a little bit off of the mat as you exhale and inhale, release back down. Let's do that two more times. So whether you're staying with the hips on the mat or you're lifting them off a little bit, it's up to you one last time. And then let's release. And then from here, we'll slowly and carefully release down. So you can either prop yourself up or you can relax down or you can have a pillow underneath your head. Let's start to straighten this top leg. We'll take an inhale here. And then as you exhale, start to bend the knee and draw the knee as high up to the shoulder as you can. So feel the work of the leg and a squeeze of now the left side waist, that top side waist. Inhale, straighten it. And then exhale, squeeze it in. Let's do three more times, moving with the rhythm of the breath. Inhale, and then exhale. And then twice more, feel the length of the leg as you inhale. And then exhale, knee to shoulder as high as is comfortable. One last time. And then squeeze. And then go ahead and release that leg down. Come onto your back and let's do the other side. So roll onto your left side. I'm just gonna come and switch over here so that you can still see the front of my body. So we'll first pop ourselves up. Now your left elbow underneath the left shoulder, forearm parallel to that top edge of the mat, really plant the palm down firmly. And then hand, top hand in front of you for a little bit of support. Take an inhale here. And then as you exhale, do a little side crunch, squeeze the bottom side waist, and then inhale is to release. And then exhale, squeeze. Inhale to release. If you want a little bit more, as you exhale, we'll lift those hips off of the mat any amount. And then inhale, release, shoulders draw back. And then two more times, whatever feels best for your body. And then go ahead and release. Gently release down and then pop yourself up in what is that most comfortable for you. Start to straighten the top leg, take an inhale, and then as you exhale, bend the knee, draw that right knee as high to the shoulder as is comfortable. Feel the squeeze of the side waist and the work of the leg. Inhale to straighten it out, and then exhale, draw it in. So three more rounds. Remember, just moving away that feels good to your body. And then twice more, finding that ujjayi breath, and then last time. All right. And then relax down. Let's roll back onto our backs. And then when you get to your back, let's draw those knees into the chest and give them a little squeeze. And then on the inhale, let's stretch those legs up. And then as you exhale, go ahead and hug it back in. So we'll glue those inner legs and the inner knees together. Inhale, maybe draw them a little bit further away from you. Tighten up through the core and then exhale, draw it in. So let's do three more rounds, finding what works best for you. So whatever angle works best for you. Remember when you extend those legs towards straight, really engage to the core, neutral position in the spine. And let's do one more time, inhale. And then exhale, hug it in. And then let's extend those legs back up to the ceiling. Arms down by the sides, palms down. Let's inhale to separate the legs into a wide V. And then as you exhale, draw them together. So use the core, use the inner thighs. Draw the right leg in front of the left as far, crossing as far apart as is comfortable. Inhale to separate. And then exhale this time the left leg. So we'll alternate the leg that's in front. So inhale to separate. Exhale, cross. Inhale to separate. 
and then exhale to cross. Continue a few more rounds. If you want even a little bit more challenge, you can start to lower the legs further away from you, but really make sure you're engaging through the belly, navel down in towards the spine, neutral position in the spine, and making sure that lower back doesn't lift higher off of the mat. If you do start to feel this in the lower back, always feel free to take breaks as needed. And then let's draw those legs back together, hug those knees into the chest, give them a squeeze, point out through the toes, and then set the feet down onto your mat for, we'll just do a few rounds of our dynamic bridge. So feet and knees hip bone distance apart, all 10 toes pointing forward and the heels are one hand length away from your bottom. Inhale to lift those hips, keep those knees steady and stable, and then exhale, roll it down the spine. And let's keep our head in that neutral position. If you'd like to add the arms, inhale, hips and arms lift, whatever height it feels comfortable, and then exhale, release it down. So moving a few more rounds on the rhythm of the breath at whatever height, feels good to the body. So make sure you're energizing through the back of the legs. Find that backward tilt of the pelvis. Just think about always trying to find length in the lower back when we come in and out of our bridge pose. Let's do one more round. Maybe holding at the top for just a moment and then slowly release it down. And then when you get there, you can hug those knees into the chest, give them a squeeze, a rock left and right, a circle killer motion if that feels good whatever kind of little stretches feels good to your body and then as you're ready let's slowly release those feet down let's roll off onto one side and press our way up to a comfortable seat so if you do find that cross-legged position doesn't feel so good you can extend those legs long you can bend those knees you can sit up on a cushion or a pillow sometimes that helps to get that nice long spine. Let's draw the palms of the hands together at our heart center. Take a moment here. Find your ujjayi breath. Find the shoulders over the hips, the head over the tailbone, sitting up as tall as you can, so engaging through the core muscles. And if you'd like to set an intention or a dedication for your practice, please do so at this time. And then let's open the eyes if they're closed. Namaste. Thank you for joining me today. Let's draw the hands onto the thighs. Let's start with a few spinal circles, circling the upper half of the body over the lower. Just getting a little bit more warmed up, a little stretch for the side waist and the lower back. And always moving in a way that feels good. So whether your pace is slower or faster than mine, that's fine as long as it feels good to your body. Let's change the direction of our circles. And then let's slowly make our way up to a tall seated mountain pose. Inhale, arms out and up. And then exhale, hands to the heart. So modify if you need to. Inhale, arms out and up. Exhale, hands to the heart. And one last time, arms out and up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Let's interlace the fingers and start to kind of slowly roll out the wrists, get a nice stretch for them, change the direction of those circles, maybe crack a knuckles if that feels good. And then let's release, really shake it out. And then let's come onto our hands and knees into tabletop pose. Remember, if you do have any concerns with the wrist, feel free to come onto your forearms. You can slide blocks or books or pillows underneath your forearms. Let's have the hips underneath, or hips right atop the knees, knees under hips, and then shoulders, elbows, and wrists in line. And if the wrists are a little sensitive, you can walk your hands just a smidgen forward of the shoulders. Draw those shoulders back. So first find neutral tabletop position, engaging through the belly. And then let's move into our cow cat. So inhale, a little arch in the spine. And then exhale, pull the belly in a little round through the spine. So moving a few more rounds on the rhythm of your breath and moving in a range of motion that feels good. Noticing if you have any tender spots. Maybe getting a little extra stretch for those areas if that feels good for your body. 
And then let's come back to neutral tabletop position. Widen the knees and sit it back into child's pose. So child's pose is a pose of rest, or it can even be a pose to take some extra stretches for the hands and the wrist. You can have the arms wherever is comfortable. Forehead can relax down onto a pillow or your mat. You never need permission to come into child's pose. And then let's slowly come back to our hands and knees. Let's do a little bit more core work. So let's walk the hands one hand length forward from tabletop pose and then draw the shoulders to stack over the wrists. So find neutral position in the spine. So this is our plank pose with the knees are down. And then from here, we're going to do a little cow cat. So inhale, this is a tiny cow pose. And then as you exhale, engage through the front part of the core, round through the spine, but keep trying to maintain those shoulders over the wrist. So inhale, release, little cow pose, and then exhale, engage strongly through the core, round through the spine. So really feel the squeeze along the front of the torso. Let's do that three more times. Inhale, little arch, and then exhale, round. Draw the tailbone underneath you twice more. So really working a little bit more on the core. And then one last time, draw the shoulders back, lots of work for the chest and the arms as well. Come back to neutral and then release back into child's pose. Take a moment here. You can even stack the hands underneath the forehead if that feels comfortable. And then from child's pose, let's rise back up onto our hands and knees and let's come into our side plank pose. So with your right lower leg, let's draw it a little bit over to the right. Start to straighten your left leg back behind you and then turn the left toes to point to the left side of the mat. See if you can flatten that left foot into the mat. And then we'll have a relatively straight line from your right hand to your right knee to the arch of the left foot. Right hand right underneath the right shoulder. Let's start to turn the chest to the left. And this lower right leg is there behind you for balance, for support. And then let's start to extend the left arm just alongside the body. Move the shoulders down. You're welcome to stay here. Feel the squeeze of the sideways, that bottom sideways. Or you can draw the, if it's okay on the shoulder, draw the arm by the ear. Keep moving the shoulders down and breathing here. Finding your balance, tightening up through the core. And then let's release that top arm back the way, back where it went, where it was. And then come back to your tabletop pose. I'm just gonna spin around so that you can see the other side. So starting from neutral tabletop pose, let's swivel now the left lower leg over to the left. Start to straighten the right leg, turn the right toes to the right, long edge of the mat, flatten that right foot as best as you can into the mat, and then adjust so that left wrist is underneath the left shoulder, and it's almost a straight line between your left hand, your left knee, and the arch of the right foot. And then when you're ready, let's turn the chest open to the right, right arm or top arm just alongside the body to start, and then maybe you're staying here, or maybe you're starting to sweep that right arm up by the ear and then pull the shoulder down. So find what works best for you. Remember, skipping is always an option. Breathing here, shoulders to the hips. Feel a nice stretch along that right side waist. And then let's release right arm back where it was first. And then release back down, tabletop pose. Sit it back into child's pose. From child's pose, let's stretch those arms forward, rise back up, coming into your inversion, either puppy pose or downward facing dog, your choice. For puppy pose, hips stay over the knees, walk the hands towards the top edge of the mat, relax the shoulders, forearms, elbows down, maybe the forehead on the mat or on a pillow. For downward facing dog, if your body is ready to come into it, walk the hands with few inches forward of the shoulders, curl those toes under, lift those hips, draw the hips back and up. Maybe you're pedaling through the legs a few times. Getting a nice stretch through the chest, feel the length along the spine, tighten up through the belly. One more round of breath here. And then let's slowly release the knees down. And wherever you are, let's sit it back into child's pose. 
And let's come back into either puppy pose or downward facing dog, your choice, or even skipping. Just to feel another stretch for the spine. If you're in downward facing dog, a little stretch for those legs. Keep moving the shoulders back away from the ears. Lots of space for the head and the neck. And then as you're ready, let's make our way into a forward fold at the top of the mat in the manner that is most comfortable and safe for you to do so. And when you get there, separate those feet a little bit wider than the hips. Bend those knees. Let's roll it on up the spine. Hands walking up the legs for additional support if you need to. If you need it, head coming up last. And then when you get there, let's circle those arms out and up and then exhale, hands to the heart. Let's separate those feet about hip bone distance apart and then let's circle those arms out and up. And then as you exhale, easy little side bend over. I'll mirror you to your right, move the shoulders down and then you can press into this bottom hand to upright the spine, inhale to lift. And then exhale, release it over to the other side. Just nice, easy side bends on the breath. Inhale to come up. Exhale, side bend. Inhale to come back up. Exhale, side bend. And then let's come back up to center. Take an inhale. And then as you exhale, hands to the heart. Let's have a little bend in the knees, almost like we're coming into chair pose, but a very shallow chair. So we have a bend in those knees. Make sure you can see all 10 toes. Knees are tracking towards the center of those toes. And then let's extend those arms forward, move the shoulders down. Now coming into more of an active twist. Take an inhale here. And then as you ex exhale, let's draw your right arm out to the right. And as we're drawing the right arm out to the right, the shoulders and the chest are turning to the right to a comfortable point, but your hips and your knees stay pointing forward. And then inhale, come back to center. And then exhale over to the other side. So just twisting from the upper half of the body. Inhale back to center. Exhale, twist. Feel the work of the sideways. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, twist over to the other side. Remember, lower half of the body stays still. Let's come back to center. And then relax. Start to straighten those legs. Inhale, arms out and up. And then exhale, hands to the heart. I'm going to walk to the top of my mat. So let's start with a little warm up. Inhale, arms out and up or forward and up. Exhale, soft bend in the knees, melt it into your forward fold. Remember the depth of your forward fold is up to you. You're welcome to stay higher. Inhale, halfway lift, draw the heart forward. Try to find a nice strong flat back. Remember, bend those knees as much as you need to. And then exhale, release into your forward fold. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, lift up halfway. And then exhale, release. And then we'll take a moment here. You can come onto your forearms, onto your thighs, coming into a supported forward fold. If it is okay on your body to relax deeper, you can get a nice stretch through the back of the body. And then let's bend those knees, engage through the core so that we can walk ourselves back to upright. And then when you get there, let's inhale, arms out or forward and up. And then exhale, hands to the heart. Let's step the left foot back. We're coming into high crescent base. So feet, hip bone distance apart or a little bit wider. All 10 toes pointing as forward as you can. And then bend the right knee to stack it atop the right ankle, track it towards the center of the toes and then freeze it there. So stack, track and freeze and then melting that left heel down. So your left heel may or may not touch the mat a little bit. If you want a little bit more challenging of practice, you can step your left foot a little bit further back, more relaxing. You could step it forward to get that heel down. So just depending on how you'd like your practice to be, try to get neutral position in the spine, melt the tailbone down, even if you need to have a micro bend in that back knee. And then let's add those arms, draw the arms up and then move the shoulders down. And then we'll take an inhale here. And then as you exhale, let's do a little side bend over to the right. So both arms can be up to the ceiling or forward, whatever is more comfortable for the shoulders. Working on the balance, a little side bend, make sure you're not twisting. And then on the next inhale, come back to center and then exhale over to the other side, moving really slowly to give your legs a chance to keep its balance. 
And then let's come back to center, draw the arms forward and down, and then let's transfer the weight so we could step it forward. And let's move over to the other side. Left foot is the lead foot, step the right foot back, high crescent base on this side, feet hip bone distance apart or a little bit wider. All 10 toes pointing as forward as you can. Start to bend the left knee, stack, track and freeze it, and then melt that right heel down. Really strong through both legs. Tighten up through the core, tailbone melts down, and then draw the arms up to a comfortable point, melt those shoulders down. Find your balance here. We'll take an inhale, and then as you exhale, a little side bend over to the left. Remember to move very slowly to give your body a chance to find its balance, enjoy those wiggles. And then let's come back to center, take an inhale, and then exhale, a little side bend over to the right. Really working on the strength of the ankles and the feet as well. Let's come back to center, release those arms forward and down, and then slowly transfer the weight so you can step it back to the top of the mat. Inhale, arms out or forward and up, and then exhale, hands to the heart. Let's step our feet into our chair pose feet and we'll go into a little flow from there. So either feet together or feet hip bone distance apart, your choice. And then let's find chair pose. So start to bend those knees, hinge forward at the hips so you can draw your bottom back behind you. Tighten up through the core, neutral position in the spine, tailbone melts down so we're lengthening the lower back but not rounding through the spine. As neutral position as you can and then extend those arms forward or forward and up. Take a quick look. Make sure you can see all 10 toes. Feel the weight more towards the heels. And remember, if your feet are apart, the knees stay the same distance apart as the feet. We'll take an inhale here. And then as you exhale, let's come into a forward fold. So begin to straighten the legs, hinge forward at the hips. And let's just have our hands on our thighs, on our legs for support. Inhale, halfway lift, find a long spine. Let's actually come up a little bit higher. So maybe the body, the torso is about 45 degrees. And then with the hands onto the right thigh, as you exhale, let's slowly slide or step the left foot back, coming into warrior one base. So always feel free to adjust those feet as you need to. Strong core, strong flat back. Let's press into the, thigh, the right thigh to upright. And let's find ourselves in warrior one. Draw the shoulders down. And take a few moments here. Make sure the alignment is good. So that back foot, left toes angled to the outside of the top left corner of the mat. Bend the right knee to stack, track, and freeze. Take another inhale. And then as you exhale, let's bow it forward. Humble warrior. So either 45 degrees with the torso, if it is okay to go a little bit lower, tighten up through the core and bow forward, squeezing those outer hips in. And then with that tight core, let's rise back up, warrior one. And then let's release arms forward. Keep moving the shoulders down. Moving into high crescent pose from warrior one, let's lift the left heel, turn those left toes to point as forward as you can comfortably. If you need to widen the feet, feel free to walk that right foot over to the right a little bit. And we'll take an inhale here. And then as you exhale, we're going to do that twist that we did earlier. So start to draw the right arm out to the right, turn the shoulders and the chest to the right any amount. Remember the hips stay pointing forward. And then let's slowly come back to center. Take an inhale and then exhale over to the other side. Left arm out to the left, shoulders and chest start to turn to the left, but hips stay pointing forward. And then let's come back. And then relax those arms down, press it forward, and come back into your feet for chair pose feet. So either feet together or feet hip bone distance apart. And then when you're ready, let's come into chair pose. Remember, chair pose doesn't have to be too deep. As long as you're engaging through those legs, the muscles on your bottom, your core, you will get some good strength work there. Take another inhale in chair. And then as you exhale, fold it forward. Remember, hands can be on the thighs for support. Inhale, let's lift up higher than halfway. Really strong in the core, strong flat back. And then as you exhale, hands on the left thigh and let's step or slide the right foot back for warrior one. Feel free to adjust the feet as you need. And then when you're ready, let's come into warrior one, pressing your way up, arms forward or forward and up, and then settling into the pose and taking a few moments here, making sure the alignment is good. Feel the work of the feet, the ankles, 
stack track and freeze that left knee. Feel the outer edge of the right foot press into the mat. Engage through the arches of the feet. Take another inhale, and then as you exhale, your humble warrior. So either halfway to humble, 45 degrees, arms down by the sides. If it is okay on your body to go deeper, you can bow deeper as long as you're engaging through the core to protect the lower back. Outer hips hug in, energize through those strong leg muscles. And then on the next inhale, let's rise back up to warrior one. And then as you exhale, let's draw those arms forward. Coming into high crescent, lift the right heel, turn those right toes to point forward, and then melt that right heel down. Find your balance here. Feel free to widen the feet if you need to. And we'll take an inhale, and then as you exhale, we're first twisting to the left. So draw the shoulders down, start to draw the left arm out to the left, at the shoulders and the chest to the left, easy twist. And then let's come back to center, take an inhale, and then exhale over to the other side. As much as is comfortable, or as much space as you have. And then let's come back to center, ah, release the arms down, step it forward. And then let's come into a supported forward fold. So feet a little bit wider than the hips. You can relax, forearms onto the thighs, round through the spine, maybe staying high if you need to, if it is okay on your body to go lower, then you can glide the hands down the legs, maybe reaching the floor. And if it feels good to release the head, you can. It's whatever feels good to stretch out through that lower back. You can always have a nice bend in those knees. And then to come out, let's slowly walk the hands up the legs, engage through the core, bend those knees, let's slow roll it up the spine taking as much time as you need and then when you get there head coming up last let's circle those arms out and up take an inhale and then exhale hands to the heart let's come into a standing camel pose draw the hands onto the hips draw those thumbs towards each other elbows start to draw towards each other move the shoulders back and then use your hands to press your tailbone down lengthen through the lower back Take an inhale here, maybe lift the heart, and then as you exhale, think of a little upper back bend right underneath the shoulder blades, or you could stay in a relatively neutral position. You're still getting a stretch through the chest and through the shoulders. One last round of breath here. And then let's slowly upright, relax those arms, and come to the top of the mat. Let's come back into chair pose. Inhale into chair. And then as you exhale, draw those arms forward. So we're coming into that twist, but from a chair pose. So make sure you can see all 10 toes. Knees don't go past the toes. And if the, knees are to, if the feet are together, the knees are together. Feet are apart, knees are apart the same distance. Move the shoulders down, take an inhale. And then as you exhale, let's twist first to the right. So draw the right arm out to the right, turn the shoulders and the chest to the right to a comfortable point. So knees, you can take a quick look, make sure the knees are even, the hips stay even, pointing forward. And then let's come back to center as you inhale, and then exhale over to the other side. So twisting just from the waist up. Notice if the knees have shifted, try to keep those knees even with each other. Inhale draws you back to center. Exhale, stand up tall. Feel the power of the pose, mountain pose. Core is engaged, thighs engaged, shoulders move back, head over tailbone. And then let's come back, chair pose. Arms draw forward, move the shoulders down. If you can go a little bit deeper into the chair, go ahead and do so. Or maybe you need to come up a little bit higher, make sure you're tightening up through the, through the core and lengthening that lower back. Take an inhale, exhale, let's twist to the left. Any amount that feels good, knees stay pointing forward, do a knee check if you need to. Inhale, come to center, exhale over to the other side, as far as is comfortable. Inhale back to center, exhale, stand up tall. Let's draw those arms out or forward and up as you inhale, and then exhale, hands to the heart. Relax those arms down, let's keep the right foot where it is and step the left foot back. Come into warrior one base. Bend the right knee, stack it and track it. Hips point forward, shoulders point forward, neutral position in the spine, tighten up through the core and the rib cage. And when you're ready, let's draw those arms forward and up. 
and melt the shoulders down. Remember to modify or skip anything that doesn't feel good. And then from warrior one, let's take an inhale. And then as you exhale, let's open up to warrior two. So adjust both feet, both feet are moving, heel to arch alignment. Left toes slightly forward of the left heel, right knee bends so it stacks, it tracks to the center of the toes and then freeze it there, pressing into the right heel and then opening up those arms and moving the shoulders down. And then keeping that right knee frozen where it is, we're trying to square the hips to the long edge of the mat. They won't be perfectly square, but just find that action so you get a nice stretch for that inner right leg. Shoulders in the chest point towards the long edge of the mat. From our warrior two pose, let's flip the right palm, reach it up and back, reverse your warrior, melt the shoulders down, breathe here. And then let's come back to warrior two. From warrior two, we're just gonna heel toe that left foot a little bit closer to the right. And let's come into a little bit of a balance. So relax those arms down. Your right toes are still pointing to the top edge of the mat. Let's shift the weight into the right leg and then lift the left heel and keep the right toes on the mat for now. And then maybe the gaze is to the top edge of the mat. Maybe you're lifting your right arm to be parallel to the floor with the palm facing up, shoulders move down. Maybe the left arm is moving up as well, palms facing up. And then let's relax those arms down and step back to the top of the mat. Let's move over to the other side. Left foot stays where it is, right foot steps back. I'm just going to move over to this edge so you can still see the front of me. Let's find our way into warrior one, taking our time to get in there, moving the shoulders down, strong through the legs, the ankles, the core. We'll take an inhale here, and then as you exhale, let's open up to warrior two. So both feet need to move, heel to toe, or heel to arch alignment, bend the left knee, stack it, track it, and freeze it, press into the left heel, upright the spine, strong in both legs. Taking a moment, shoulders over the hips, trying to square the hips to the long edge of the mat without changing the position of the left knee. And then let's flip the left palm, reach it up and back, reverse your warrior. Nice, easy side bend here. And then let's come back, warrior two. And then you can relax those arms down as you heel toe that back foot a little bit closer to the front. Left foot still, or top foot, front foot still points to the top edge of the mat. And then when you feel like you can shift a little bit more weight into the left foot, stand strong in the left leg, maybe the right heel lifts. We'll keep the right toes down, and then maybe the left arm extends forward, maybe the right arm extends back, palms facing up. Feel the essence of your balance, and then release arms down and step back to the top of the mat. We're going to add a little bit more to that sequence. I'm gonna come back to the top of my mat and take a moment here in mountain pose. And then from mountain pose, right leg stays where it is, left foot steps back, warrior one. Inhale, draw those arms forward or forward and up as you open up the chest and then exhale. Let's come into warrior two, adjusting those feet. Take the time to get into the pose. Inhale, let's flip the right palm, reach it up and back. And then exhale, come back to warrior two. Let's inhale, shift a little bit forward for side angle pose. And then exhale, hand or forearm onto that right leg. And we'll maybe you'll sweep the left arm up over the ear. Maybe you're just keeping that left arm where it is. Side angle pose. And then let's sweep that left arm back to where it came. Press into that right arm to upright, warrior two. And then release the hands down. Start to heel toe that left foot towards the right until you feel comfortable transferring the weight into the right leg, standing tall. Maybe that left heel lifts. Maybe the right arm reaches out. Maybe the left arm for balance. Maybe those left toes lift. Enjoy those wiggles in our quarter moon pose. Press out through that left heel and then release hands down, swivel to face the front of the mat. So it's up to you how much you want to challenge your balance. If your balance feels a little challenged today, just keep those toes down. 
Let's move over to the other side. Left foot stays where it is. Right foot steps back. Warrior one base. Taking your time to get into the pose. Making sure the alignment is there. And then inhale. Draw the arms forward and four, forward and up. Feel the stretch of the chest. And then exhale. Let's open up to warrior two. Making sure those feet are in that really good alignment. Let's flip the left palm. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Nice, easy side bend. And then exhale, come back to warrior two. Inhale, little shift forward. So you can place the hand or the forearm onto the thigh. Then maybe stay here or maybe exhale and draw the right arm by the ear. Move the shoulder down. So find what works best, especially for the shoulders. Always want to make sure those joints are happy. And then let's sweep that right arm back from where it came. Press into that bottom hand to upright. And then relax those arms down. Start to heel toe your right foot closer to the left until you feel comfortable and balanced to shift the weight into the left leg. Maybe both arms extend out for balance. Maybe the right toes stay down or maybe your right leg lifts up a little bit, flexing through that foot. Enjoying those wiggles. Ooh. And then relax, arms down. <sighs> Inhale, let's draw those arms out or forward and up. And then exhale, hands to the heart. Nice work, everyone. So let's come into a wide leg stance. So we can feel a little bit more opening through the backs of the legs, the inner legs. So all 10 toes point forward to start. So this will be our wide leg neutral position. We'll take an inhale here. Let's we'll circle these arms out and up. And then as you exhale, soft bend in those knees, hinge forward at the hips, like coming into a forward fold, wide leg forward fold, supported, and then forearms onto the thighs. You're welcome to even stay a little bit higher if you'd like, or if it is okay on the body, you can draw those hands for further down the legs, keeping the hands onto the legs or onto the floor or blocks or support and find your mild sensation of a stretch. Getting a little stretch for the lower back, easy mild sensation for the back of the legs. Notice if you're very heavy in the heels, try to be a little bit more even. You can even press a little bit, tiny bit, little bit more weight into the balls of the feet. And then let's bend those knees. Draw the hands onto the thighs, engage strongly through the belly, elbows alongside the body, and we're going to slowly roll it on up to that comfortable speed where the head comes up last. Let's lift the heels, draw those heels in, and we're coming into temple pose. So remember when we bend those knees, they don't go past the ankles, they track towards the center of those toes. Let's start with the hands onto the thighs and we're going to hinge forward a little bit at the hips and allow the shoulders to come up by the ears. We'll take an inhale here. And then as you exhale, draw your right shoulder towards the inside and we'll get a little twist looking over to the left or over your left shoulder. So the hips and the knees stay even. Inhale, come back to center, and then exhale over to the other side. So you'll get an extra little stretch on those inner legs. Inhale, back to center. Exhale to the left. Inhale, back to center. Exhale to the right. So you should feel some work in those legs. So let's inhale, come back to center. Exhale, press into the heels to stand up tall. <sighs> Draw all 10 toes to point forward. Inhale, arms out and up. And then exhale, soft bend in the knees, wide leg forward, full stretch out through the lower back. Take a moment here. Still finding your ujjayi breath. And then let's slowly... Softly bend the knees, draw the hands onto the thigh, elbows in, engage to the core so you can slowly roll it on up. And then inhale, arms out and up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Let's lift your right heel. Find that external rotation coming into triangle pose. So your right toes, right knee point towards the top edge of the mat. Heel to arch alignment, draw the left toes in. And then let's extend those arms out and draw the palms to face up. Move the shoulders down. Coming into triangle pose, let's draw those hips back. As we reach your right arm forward, 
Keep, try to keep that right arm, right hand parallel to the floor. So lots of reach here, and we can no longer reach. Let's change the arms, move the shoulders down. So the top arm can reach up or out to the side, or you can even skip bottom hand. You can even take the back of the bottom hand to the inside of the leg and press it, gentle pressure to keep that chest pointing out to the side, breathing here. Feel the work of the top side waist. And then let's slowly come out of triangle, bending that right knee, uprighting the spine. And then relax those arms, straighten the leg. Let's turn all 10 toes to point forward. Inhale, arms out and up. Exhale, hands to the heart, over to the other side. Lift your left heel externally, rotate at the hip, left toes, left knee point to the, the short edge of the mat. Adjust the feet, heel to arch alignment. Back toes slightly forward of the heel. Extend those arms out, move the shoulders down. Turn the palms to face up. And then coming into triangle pose, draw those hips back and up as far as is comfortable. Reach the left arm as far forward as you can with that left palm parallel to the floor. And we can no longer reach, get lots of stretch here. We'll just change the position of the arms. Maybe the back of the hand to the inside of the leg. Maybe the top arm up or anywhere that feels good. Move the shoulders down, feel lots of stretch. Nice leg, stretch on the inner legs. Work for that top sideways. Take another breath here. And then to come out, let's bend through that front leg, warrior two, and then release. <sighs> All 10 toes pointing forward. Start to heel toe those feet closer together. Let's come into a version of our eagle pose. So I'll marry you. Let's take your right foot, cross it in front of the left. And you can stay on the ball of the foot. If, it, if your balance feels very challenged today, you're welcome to just stay with those feet as is. So find what works best for you. Soft bend in both knees. And then we'll extend those arms out, palms facing down, move the shoulders down. And then from here, let's cross your right arm underneath the left, coming into eagle arms. Option one, if you do have any concerns with the shoulders, fingertips on the shoulders, move the elbows down. Option two, if it is okay on the arms, you can start to weave. I'm just going to move over to the side so I can see you. You can start to weave the forearms, keep moving the shoulders down, and be strong in the wrists and the fingers. So we don't want to side bend or have the fingers bent. We want to stay strong there and breathing here. So working on the back balance. Remember, we just want little wiggles. We don't want to feel like we're going to fall over. So do what you need to do to make sure you stay balanced, even if that means coming out of the pose and then getting a stretch to the upper back and the shoulders. Let's slowly release those arms first, draw them out and then down and then release that foot. Reset. Let's move over to the other side. Your left foot crosses in front, maybe staying on the ball of the foot. Soft bend in those knees so you can really feel the leg muscles working. Extend those arms out, palms facing down, shoulders moving down. And this time your left arm underneath the right, maybe option one, Every the sides of the body are different, or you can start to weave those lower arms and the hands and the wrists. Move the shoulders down, breathing here, finding your eagle pose. Nice stretch. And then as you're ready, let's slowly release, open it out, and then down, release. Stretch it out. Nice work, everyone. Let's come to the top of the mat and do some stretches. So from the top of the mat, let's inhale to circle those arms out and up or forward and up, and then exhale, soft bend in the knees, melt it forward. Bend those knees so much you can, so much that you can reach your fingers onto the mat. And we're slowly going to slide this left foot back and lower the left knee to the mat. So if you do have a pillow handy, it's a nice just to cushion up that back left knee. And if it doesn't feel good on the knee, feel free to skip. Let's stack the right knee atop the right ankle, tracking towards the center of those toes, and we're relaxing the shoulders down. So if you do have any blocks or any books handy, you're welcome to prop your hands onto those books or blocks if you need to. 
If you're able to comfortably come up a little bit higher, you can draw your right forearm onto the right thigh, kind of rest your forearms onto the right thigh, and then draw those hips forward as much as is comfortable. So the weight of our upper half of the body is resting on something, whether it's the forearms onto the thighs or hands onto the mat or onto books, so that you can get a nice, easy sensation of a stretch for the left thigh and the hip flexor. I'm just gonna breathe here for another moment. So remember, back off, modify, skip anything that doesn't feel good. We especially want to be sensitive to our joints. So I always want to make sure the joints are happy. And then from here, let's release our hands, fingers back down to the mat. And then start to heel toe that right foot towards the right edge of the mat. So you can draw both hands to the inside of the right leg. And if you do have a block or books or pillows or a box, anything that can give you a little bit of lift if you need it, that would be helpful. Coming into lizard pose, drawing those hips forward as much as is comfortable and feeling a stretch through those hips, making sure that front knee doesn't go past the front ankle. So this is our lizard pose, drawing the shoulders back. It is a grounding pose, so you'll feel a stretch, but there is a little bit of energy, especially in the hands, draw the shoulders back and breathe here. And then to come out of the pose, you can remove the blocks or place them to the outside of the right leg. Heel toe that right foot back to where it was. And then we'll slowly start to scooch that left knee forward so that we can make our way back into a forward fold. And then from here, we'll move over to the other side. So start to walk or step, slide your right foot back, lower the right knee to the mat. Use a pillow under the knee if you need to. And then first drawing our hips forward. Make sure that left knee stacks atop the ankle, tracks towards the direction of the center of the toes. And maybe staying with the hands down or coming forearms onto that left thigh. And if you do need any assistance, you're always welcome to have a chair nearby to help you or any prop nearby to help. Breathing here for another moment, finding your mild sensation of a stretch. And then let's release those hands down, maybe on your books or box or pillows or just to the mat as you slowly start to heel toe that left foot to the Outer edge of the mat, hands on the inside, coming into lizard pose. And finding a way to make yourself comfortable as you find your mild sensation of a stretch. Like I said, feel free to modify or skip anything that does not feel good to the body. All right, and then to come out, this time, we're just going to heel to our left foot and then sweep our left knee to be back to meet the right. And then we're going to draw the hips off to one side. You can remove the pillow. Place the pillow off to one side. And then slowly, let's roll onto our back. So if you do have a belt or a strap or even just a towel, make sure it is handy near you. Let's roll onto our backs. Very gently. And then when you get there, whoop, here's my belt. Let's draw that right leg in, strap the ball of the right foot and start to extend that right leg up to the ceiling or even a little bit further away from you if you need to, to get that leg towards straight. And just taking a moment here, feeling the stretch along the back of the right leg, right toes point straight above the head. So mild sensation along the back of the right leg, just to a point that feels good. And then let's slowly release. Let's come into our thread the needle pose. Cross the right ankle over the left thigh above the knee. Flex the foot. Maybe stay here. Maybe draw the leg shape towards you. Maybe use your belt underneath so you can relax the arms down. 
but if this pose doesn't feel good on the joints, feel free to just hug that right knee into the chest. That's an option as well. But find what works best for you to get a nice easy stretch through the hips. And then let's slowly release it on down and let's move over to the other side. Draw the left knee in, belt up or strap the ball of the left foot, extend the left leg up to the ceiling, find your comfortable mild sensation of a stretch for the back of that left leg. Taking a few rounds of breath here. And then, once you find that you feel even on both sides, bend the knee, cross the left ankle, over the thigh, above the knee, flex through the left foot. Maybe stay here, maybe draw the leg shape towards you. Maybe using the strap, give your lower half of the body support so you don't strain the lower back finding your thread the needle pose, but modifying or choosing a different pose if that is better for your body. Still finding that deep ujjayi breath. And then let's slowly release. Place the feet down onto your floor and then grab your strap or your towel or your belt. And let's have the palms facing down and we'll have the hands at least shoulder width distance apart or wider. Let's draw the backs of the shoulders down into the mat and kind of keep them there. Going to open up through the chest, but active in the muscles of the upper back. You can rest the knees against each other if you'd like. And you can have a soft bend in the elbows as you slowly lift those arms up to a comfortable point. So make sure that the shoulders are happy. Maybe you're just lifting the arms up to the ceiling. You'll still get a stretch here. Or maybe the arms are coming up a little bit more over the head. Find what is comfortable. We're stretching out through the chest, the armpits. And then let's slowly draw those arms back up, down by the sides, release the strap anywhere off of the mat. Start to hug the right knee into the chest, straighten the left leg long to the mat, right foot on the left thigh, coming into a twist. Maybe shifting those hips a little bit to the right before you twist the lower half of the body to the left. Left hand is there for support. Keep both shoulders onto the mat, maybe the right arm out to the right, maybe the head turns to the right or wherever is comfortable for the neck. Taking a couple rounds of breath here. Finding that easy twist. And then let's unwind. Place the right foot down, shift the hips back to center first. And then let's bend the left knee, slide the right leg long. Shift the hips a little now over to the left. Place the left foot onto the right thigh and find your comfortable twist on this side. Maybe left arm to the left, maybe the head turns to the left. Finding that nice deep way of breathing. And then let's slowly untwist. Left foot down, recenter. Bend the right knee, hug those knees into the chest. Happy baby pose. Or if there's any other pose you'd like to take, any last stretch you'd like to take before our final pose of Shavasana, go ahead and take it. And then as you're ready, release feet down. Find your most comfortable position for Shavasana. Maybe I'm going to use a pillow under my head for this one. Arms down by the sides, palms facing up, fingers curled. Coming into our final pose, our final pose of Shavasana, where we can completely relax and rejuvenate. I will play the sound of the ocean. Let's take a deep breath in. Exhale out the mouth. And enjoy these next few minutes of your Shavasana.
and slowly begin to deepen your breath. Send some movement into your fingers, into your toes. On the next inhale, you can stretch the arms up to the ceiling or over the head. And then as you exhale, return those arms down by the sides. If you'd like, you can hug those knees into the chest. And then roll onto one side and gently press your way up to a comfortable seat, head coming up last. And when you get there, let's draw the palms of the hands together at our heart center. Take a moment here. Recall that intention or dedication that you set at the beginning of your practice. And then let's stack the hands atop our heart. Take a moment to feel gratitude to yourself for coming to your practice or feel gratitude for anything or everything in your life that you are grateful for. And then let's draw the palms of the hands back together. Thank you so much for allowing me to guide you through your practice today. It truly is a privilege and a joy. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Continue to be healthy and safe, and we'll see you next time.